So welcome to our today's class, that is uh, financial management. And uh, today's class, uh, we begin in our revision, and I want to begin with the area of uh, the cost of capital. Once we're done with the cost of capital, I will also get to valuation of securities. So with that, uh, uh, when we talk about the cost of capital here, this is the required rate of return by an investor who has invested money in a company. Now for this one, uh, for the cost of capital is normally categorized into three. We have what we call the cost of equity. Cost of equity. We also have the cost of preferences. And then we have what we call the cost of what? We have what we call the cost of debentures. So the cost of equity in this case is normally categorized into two. We have what we call the cost of, we have the cost of ordinary shares, and then we have the cost of what we call the what? Retained earnings, cost of retained earnings. That is what we mean in that regard. So for the cost of ordinary shares, in this case, it normally depends with the type of the ordinary share. And the type of the ordinary share, in this case, we, are, we normally categorize them into two. We have zero dividend growth rate ordinary shares. And for the zero dividend growth rate ordinary shares, for you to get the KE will be D, D over PO minus rotation cost, then you multiply by 100. That is in case of a zero dividend growth rate ordinary shares. In case of a constant, the second one is the constant dividend growth rate ordinary shares, which you normally get it by taking KE will be equals to DO one plus G all over K, uh, all over PO minus flotation cost, then you add it, then you multiply by entry whereby the O is the last dividend paid. Or in this case, you, uh, when you take uh, DO, that is DO one plus Z is normally giving us what we call the what? D1, which in that case is the next dividend. Now we have the second part, which in this case is uh, on the cost of equity, is the cost of retained earnings the cost of retained earnings. Now, when you talk about the cost of retained earnings, the retained earnings in this case are normally internal sources of finance which do not incur flotation costs. And therefore, in this case, the only difference in this case, you will not less the what? Flotation cost, meaning that for the zero dividend, for the zero dividend, in this case, it will be given by taking KE will be D all over PO, you multiply by flotation cost. And then for the constant, constant in this case, it will be KE, which will be DO one plus G all over, uh, that is uh, all over PO, then you add G and you multiply by entry. That is the only difference in this case, you will not be able to less what we call the flotation cost, since retained earnings are in internal sources of finance, and therefore they do not incur flotation costs. When we talk of flotation costs in this case, is the cost that you incur when, or it is incurred when you issue what we call the ordinary shares. That is what we mean in that regard. Then. Second one is the cost of free franchise. Cost of free franchise. Free franchise. And on the cost of free franchise, in this case, you just check the KP will be D all over PO minus rotation cost. Then you multiply by entry. Then the last one is the cost of uh, debentures. And debentures are normally categorized into two. Number one, we have the irredeemable debentures. Irredeemable debentures do not have a defined word, maturity period. And therefore, to get the, their cost to be interest 
one uh, that is uh, interest one minus t all over the value of the venture minus f then you multiply by and that is minus rotation cost now if it is redeemable if it is redeemable to get the cost uh, that is to get the kd will be the interest one minus tax plus the maturity value minus the value of the bencha one over n then you divide by the maturity value plus value of the bencha one over two that is what you call uh, the redeemable debentures therefore that is how you get the cost of uh, that is how you get the cost of each component of the cost of capital so in this case, there is now what we call the WSEC. WSEC is the average cost of capital, which is normally used when evaluating existing projects. And to get the WSEC, in this case, you get it by taking the WEKE, that is the weight of ordinary shares, cost of ordinary shares, weight of preference shares, cost of preference shares, then weight of the venture, cost of the venture. That is how you will get the WSEC. And this is when ever used when evaluating existing projects. Meaning that for you to get the weights, you normally use what we call the market what? Market values. So in this case, you don't include the cost of retained earnings. Then we have what we call the WMCC. WMCC in this case is normally used when evaluating new projects and therefore in this case it will just be WRKR, WEKE, WPKP and then WDKD. In this case you normally include the retained earnings because what you normally use in this case is just the amount to raise, just the amount to raise. So that is what you need to understand on, on that area of uh, the WSEC and WMCC. So without wasting a lot of time, we can try an example. I will do one question on WSEC, and I will also do another question on WMCC. So for WSEC, we do November 2015, I mean, we do not november 2015 but we do the question in the sitting of do the question in the sitting of b november 20 Yeah, November 2016, November 2016, question number 2B. November 2016, question 2B. November 2016, question 2B. November 2016, question 2B. November 2016, question number 2B. Now, Sandy Limited presented the following extracts of the statement of financial position. As of 31st October 2016, we've been given equity, thereby we have the ordinary shares. We also have the reserves. Long-term liabilities, we have 4% preference shares at a shillings one nominal value. We also have the 7% bonds redeemable after six years. Then we have the long-term loan, bank loan, which in that case we've been given there. Additional information. Ordinary shares of Sandy Limited have an ex-dividend market value of 47 per share and an ordinary dividend of 3.63 per share has just been paid. The following dividends have been uh, paid over the first four years we've been given the year and dividend per share. The free franchise are not redeemable 
and have an X dividend market value of 40 cents per share. The 7% is uh, redeemable at a 5% premium at their nominal value of shillings 100 per bond and have an X interest market value of 104.5. The bank loan has a variable interest rate that has averaged 4% per year in the recent years. Corporate tax rate is 30%. You are required the weighted average cost of capital. And number two, you explain reasons why the cost of debt could be greater than the cost of, that could be greater than the cost of debt. That is the cost of equity could be greater than the cost of debt. Now, let's begin with uh, the, the, in this case, what we be required to get here, the WSEC. And to get the WSEC is the weight of ordin ordinary shares, cost of ordinary shares, weight of free friend shares, cost of free friend shares, weight of debentures, cost of debenture. Now, in this case also, again, for the debentures, we've been given the, de uh, the debenture and seen they also have what we call the what? The loan. So meaning that there will be also the weight of the bank loan and then the cost of the bank what? Bank loan. You will also have to include that. So in that case, you will begin by looking at the cost. And we begin with the first one, which is the cost of ordinary shares, which is the cost of ordinary shares. So to get the KE in this case, remember it is a, where uh, it is a constant dividend growth rate ordinary share, which in that case, it will be DO1 plus D all over PO minus flotation cost. You add D, then you multiply by entry. In our first thing to look for is the dividend. And I said, wherever you will ever see you being given dividend per share for particular years, in that case, you use what the compounding method of uh, growth rate in order to determine the growth rate. So in that case, we can use that to get the growth rate, which in this case is always the n root of dn all over do u minus one. So in that case, we've been given the dividend per share from year 2013, 2014, and 2015, and 2016. DN is the dividend in year 2016. Then DO is dividend in year 20 what? In year 2013. And therefore, in that case, this is how you normally plan them. Is year 2013, 2014, 2015, and 2016. This will be DO, D1, D2, and D3. So meaning that because of that three, we'll take three, that is the root of uh, DN. DN is the dividend in year 2016, which is 3.5. You divide by dividend in year 2013, which is 3.09, then you minus one. 3.09, then you minus one. So in that case, you take uh, 3.5, you divide by 3.09, then you take three and the root, and the root of uh, three and the root of answer, you minus one, which in that case is four point, which is 0 0.04, which in that case is 4%. So we have the growth rate and we were given the dividend that was just paid. On additional information, number one, that the ordinary shares of Saudi Limited have, have an ex dividend market value of 47 and an ordinary dividend of 3.63 per share has just been paid. That is the last dividend. And therefore I will take three, KE will be 3.63, 3.63, one plus the growth rate, which is 0.04, you divide by 
the cost x the market price is po which is 47 there were, was no protection cost then you add 0 0.04 and you multiply by 100 which in this case it will be 3.63 3.63 you multiply by 1.04 you divide uh, by 47 and then you add 0 0.04 which in that case it will be zero. 0.03 percent that is on the cost of ordinary shares second one you look for the cost of free French shares and the free the cost of free French shares it will be kp will be d all over po minus protection cost you multiply by and our d will be given the rate of uh, dividends on the capital structure or the statement of financial position, which in that case was 4% free franc shares at shillings one. So in that case, the dividend will be 4% at one shillings. Then you divide by, then you divide by the, the current value on additional information number three. The current value of the uh, free franc shares was. 40 cents, which is just 0 0.4. There was no plotation cost. Then you multiply by what? You multiply by 100. So in that case, it will be 0 0.04, you multiply by one. You divide by 0 0.4, then you multiply by 100, which in that case, it will be 10%, which in that case, it will be 10%. We also get to the pre branch of uh, the debentures and debentures in this case, you have to recon uh, to first understand the type of debenture. And I've said on debentures in this case, we have two types of debentures. We have the redeemable debentures and the irredeemable debentures. Redeemable debentures, they have a defined maturity period. But for this one, they do not have a defined maturity period. So in our case, when you take on long-term liabilities, it was 7% bonds, which in this case was redeemable after six years, meaning that in that case, it is a redeemable bond. So you also look for the cost of irredeemable, irredeemable bond. So the cost of a redeemable bond will be the KD, which in other cases is also what we call the yield to maturity. And to get the yield to maturity is interest, one minus tax, you add the maturity value minus the value of the banker, one over N, then you divide by maturity value, you add the value of the banker, one over two, then you multiply by entry. So in our case, we can begin with the interest. Now for the interest, for the interest, we were given it's a uh, 7% and when you check on additional information number four, 7% bond is uh, redeemable at a 5% premium to their nominal value of shillings and So it will just be 7% of nominal value. Nominal value in this case is the VAR value. So maturity value is also the VAR value, which in that case, it will be seven. Then uh, we also need to look for the value of the debenture, which will also be given. The X interest market value was 104.5. That is the value of the debenture. Then the market value, if uh, we were not given that 5% premium, if you are not given that 5% premium, the ma maturity value in this case should be the VAR value. But in this case, the bonds were redeemed at a 5% premium. So in this case, we have to take that 100, we multiply by 105% of the all. We have to include that premium. So in that case, it will be 105. So with that, we know the maturity value they are redeemable after six years and therefore with that we can now get the the 
cos of the redeemable bond, which in that case it will be seven, one minus tax, which is 30%, you add the maturity value. Maturity value in this case is one or five minus one or 4.5, you multiply by one over six, then you divide by, multiply by one over six, then you divide by, you divide by uh, 105 plus 104.5, you multiply by half, then you multiply by 100, which in this case, it will be given by taking 105 minus 104.5, you multiply by 1 over 6, then uh, you multiply by you multiply by one over six plus seven, you multiply by 0 0.7, you divide by, you divide by 105, you add 104.25, uh, then you divide by two, which in that case, you now multiply by 100, which in that case, it will be 4.76%. That is now the cost of a redeemable bond. We also have to look for the cost of the bank loan. Cost of the bank loan. So to get the cost of the bank loan in this case, we normally say that after cost, after cost, that is after, after cost of debt, after cost of debt should be equal. That is after tax cost of debt. Let me use that. After tax cost of debt, which is the KD, will be given by before tax cost of debt. Cost of debt. Before tax cost of debt, one minus tax. Before tax cost of debt, one minus tax. Now, when you check on additional information, number five, the additional information number five. Now, on additional information number five, the bank loan has a variable interest rate that has averaged to 4% per year in the recent years. So before tax cost of debt in that case is just that 4% minus just the taxation, one minus tax, which is 30%. Therefore, in that case, it will be 0 0.4, you multiply by 0 0.7, which in that case, it will be 2.8%. And that is now the cost of bank loan. That will be now the cost of bank loan. So on the course already, we have all those costs. What is now remaining is on uh, the market values. So in that case, we can now get the market, market values. In that case, you can now get the market values. So for the market values in this case, we begin with the ordinary shares. Ordinary shares. So in this case, what, uh, for you to get the, the, the market values, you normally take the number of shares, you multiply by the current market value. So to get the number of shares, you just take the share capital, you divide by the nominal value, which is the bar value. So in that case, for the ordinary shares, it will just be 800 million, you divide by the nominal or the VAR value, which was five shillings. That is on the statement of financial position. And they are currently trading at the PO was 47 shillings. So we multiply by the 47. The other one is now on the free franchise. Free franchise, you also do the same. So for the free franchise, it is uh, 600 million. 600 million, you divide by the bar value, which is one, then you multiply by the, the market value, which was PO, 
and a PO in this case was 0 0.4, which was 40 cents. And then we also have for the debentures, and for the debentures, you also do the same. Debentures in this case, they were also 600 million. And the nominal value which we've been given on additional information number four was 100, and they are currently trading at 104.5. So in that case, we'll also be able to get that. And then we also have to get the value of the bank loan. The bank loan in this case normally does not change. And in that case, it will be the 200 million. So it will be 200 million. So we can now get the values of the other costs, which in this case, it will be 800, you divide by five, you multiply by 47, which that one is 7520. We also have 600 to multiply by 0 0.4, 240. And then the other one, which is 600, you divide by 100, then you multiply by 104.5, which is 627. And you get the total, get the total, the total market values. So it will be 627 plus 200. You also add 240. Then you add 7520, which in that case, it will be 85, 87 million. And therefore, we can now get the WSEC. And WSEC is weight of ordinary shares, which is 7520, divided by 85, 87 million, multiplied by the cost of ordinary shares, which is 12.03. You add you add the cost of ordinary shares, our preference shares, which in this case we have the weight, which is 240. You divide by 85, 87 million, multiply by the cost, which was 10. You also add the cost of bonds, which in this case we have to begin with the weights, 627 million, 85, 87 million. You also multiply by the cost, the cost of uh, the the cost of uh, the bonds, which in this case we got uh, 4.76, and then the last one is the cost of uh, the bank loan, which is 200 million. You divide by 85, 87, then you multiply by 2.8. So in that case, we can now get the WSCC. So 7520, you multiply by, uh, you divide by, divide by 85, 87, multiply by 12.03 plus 240, you divide by 85, 87, multiply by 10 plus 627, you divide by 85, 87, multiply by 4.76, then plus 200, divide by 85, 87, then you multiply by 2.8, which in that case, it is 11.23%. That is, that is how you get, that is how you get the cost of uh, the weighted average cost of capital, the WSEC. So that is how you get the WSEC. So you can screenshot on that area, screenshot on that area, and screenshot on that area so that we can do another question.
So we continue. We continue. We continue. Now, for the Roman number uh, two, for the Roman number two, for Roman number two, Roman number two. Now you are required to explain four reasons why the cost of equity should be greater than the cost of the debt. Reasons why the cost of equity should be greater than the cost of debt. Now, the reasons why the cost of equity should be greater than the cost of debt. This one you will have to get it out of uh, the, the reasons why. Why in this case? Uh, why in this case? People are uh, have to prepare. That is, uh, the investors will have to prepare the cost of debt, other than the cost of what? Other than the cost of equity. Remember, in this case, when we talk about the cost of capital. The lower the cost of capital, the less risk the, the, the firm. The higher the cost of capital in this case means the risk the what? The risk the firm. So one of the reasons in this case why the cost of equity should be greater than the cost of debt is because or when we get to the debt, one of it is that uh, interest on debentures is always a what? Interest on debenture, debentures is uh, tax allowable. That is something that you have talked about in taxation. The interest on debentures is a uh, tax allowable. And that's why at the end of it, you will find that the cost of equity will be greater than the cost of what? Debt. Then also we have the second one. The second one is uh, during liquidation. When the company is liquidated or is being liquidated, the first people to be paid are the debenture what? The debenture orders are not the what? Are not the shareholders. And as a result of that, the cost of that must be greater. The cost of equity will be greater or must be greater than the cost of capital, uh, the cost of debt. Then number three, then number three is uh, on uh, the interest that is paid, the interest that is paid. Now, the interest that is paid on uh, the, 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 the debt that is on the debentures is always constant. But for the dividends, they will be paid at a what? Non constant rate. It's neither increase or it's neither decrease. That is what we mean in that case. So, interest on uh, the, the, the debentures is normally constant. And then the, the shareholders' dividends in this case normally vary. So those are the reasons that uh, the cost of uh, equity could be greater uh, than the cost of debt, that the cost of debt. Now, we do a question on WMCC. We do a question on WSCC, November 2018. Do a question on WSEC, November 2018, question number, November 2018, question number, November 2018, question number 4C, 4B. November 2018, question 4B. Now there is uh, someone who is asking how did we go get the, what we call the growth rate? Remember in this case, I said, we use what we call the compounding method. Whenever you see that you've been given dividend for particular categories of years, in that case you use what we call the compounding method. And compounding method, you normally use this method as I've indicated there. N will be equal, uh, G, G will be L root of dN over DO minus one. And this is how I, uh, I was able to get the DN. DN in this case will now be D3. DO will be 2013. And the three in this case is the, the one that now we'll take as the end root. 
one that we take as the nth root. Now, we can get to that question of November 20, November 2018, 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 question number, question number 4B. Question number four B. New ways limited plans to raise uh, a new capital to expand its production level. Company plans to undertake the following financial decisions. Number one, issue 200,000 ordinary shares which have a value of shilling 10 at shillings 16 per share. The protection cost per share is shillings one. Other one, issue 75,000 12% free French shares, which have a value of uh, 20, 000, uh, 20 shillings at shillings 18 per value. The total protection uh, cost is shillings 150,000. Issue 50,000, 18% debentures, which have a value of shillings 100 at shillings 80 per debenture. Borrow shillings 5 million, 18% long term loan. The total flotation cost is shillings 2, mil, uh, 200,000. Additional information the companies. Uh, the company pays 28% ordinary dividend, which is expected to grow at a rate of 4% per annum. Corporate tax rate is 30%. And the first one you are required, the total capital to be raised, net of flotation cost. Net of flotational cost. So the total capital to be raised in this case you just take the amount to be raised from each source of finance, you minus the total uh, flotation cost. So in that case, I can get the total capital. So the total capital, the capital is being raised through what? Number one, we go to additional, to additional I mean, from the information, number one, capital will be raised through Number one is the ordinary shares. Ordinary shares. So through the ordinary shares, they will issue 200,000 ordinary shares at shillings 16. That is now the amount that will be raised through that. But however, there is a flotation cost that will be incurred for each share which is 200,000, you multiply by what? Flotation cost in that case is one shilling, which in that case will give us a value of how much? It is 200, you multiply by 16, then in that case you minus that, which in this case will be three what? Three million. The second one, on number two, issue 75%, 12% free French shares. We have what we call the free French shares. So free French shares are 75,000 and they will be issued at what value? They will be issued at shillings 18, by value of shillings went at 18. So the market value is 18, then you minus the flotation cost. Flotation cost will be 150 we've been given there 150. So in that case, it will be 75, you multiply by 18, minus 150. 
which in this case will be 1200,000. The other one will also be issued through the debentures. We have debentures. We have debentures. And through the debentures, they will issue 50,000 debentures. 50,000 debentures at the market value in this case is uh, uh, eight, is the eight, and then they will incur a flotation cost. No, they will not incur any flotation cost, and therefore in that case it will be fifty multiplied by eight, which in that case it will be four million. And then the last one is through the bank loan. That is the long term loan. The long term loan. Now, for the long term loan in this case, it will be the long term loan in this case, they will borrow 5 million, but incur a flotation cost of 200,000, which in this case will just be 4.8 what? 4.8 million. So the total capital is what we call the flotation cost to be 3,000, you add 1,200, you add 4,000, then you add 4,800, which in that case, it will be 13 million, 13 million, 13 million. That is how you get that. Then uh, the second question you've been asked about the WMCC, the WMCC. So in this case for the WMCC, we'll just get it by taking the weight of equity, cost of equity, weight of debenture, cost of debenture, weight of uh, free franchise, cost of free franchise, weight of bank loan, cost of bank loan that is how you get the wmcc so in that case we can begin by getting the ke ke will be do one plus g all over k p o minus rotation cost then you add the growth rate and you multiply by 100 so our d we don't know the do but however we were given that on uh, additional information number one it will be paid off 28 percent so you normally take that rate you multiply by the var value so what was the var value of the ordinary shares var value of the ordinary shares was only 10 shillings and therefore the dividend will be 2.8 and therefore you'll just take 2.8 one plus the growth rate, which we were given there as 4%, 0 0.4, you divide by, you divide by the value of the, the, the current value of the ordinary uh, shares, which was 16, minus one, which was the flotation cost on additional information number one. And then in that case, you add 0 0.04, you multiply by a uh, hundred. In that case, it will be 2.8, 1 plus 0 0.4, 0 0.4. Then you divide by 15, and then you add 0 0.04, and then you multiply by 100, which is 23.4%. The second one, you also get the cost of free franchise and to get the KP will be DO. You divide by PO minus flotation cost, multiply by 100. So D is the rate of uh, the dividend, free branch dividend, which we were given there, 12%, which is always of the VAR value, multiply by the VAR value, which is 20. You divide by the current, current market value, which is 18, minus the flotation cost. 
rotation cost, we know we were given the total of rotation cost, which was 150,000. And we know the number of shares that were issued and the number of shares that were issued was 75 watt, thousand. So if I take 150, I divide by 75,000, I will get the flotation cost per share, which in that case will be two. And then you multiply by 100. So it's 0 0.12, you multiply by 20, you divide by 14, then you multiply by 100 which in that case is 17.14%. That is 0 0.12, you multiply by 20, you divide by 14, I mean 16, you divide by 16. So it's 0 0.12, you multiply by 20, divide by 16, then you multiply, it is 15, 15%. It is 15 percent. Then we also go to the cost of the benjas, KD. Now, in our case, we have to confirm whether it's redeemable or irredeemable. Redeemable debenture, I said, is the one that has a divine maturity period. Uh, irredeemable, they do not have a divine maturity period. And they, in our case, we've not been given the maturity period. Therefore, it is a rede irredeemable debenture. And to get the KD of uh, uh, the irredeemable debenture, it does interest one minus tax, value of debenture minus rotation cost, then you multiply by 100. So the interest is, will be the rate of the bar value, which in that case is 18% of the bar value. The bar value in this case is 100 take one minus taxation, which is 30%. Then you divide by, we add the value of the debenture, the current value, which was 80. There is no flotation cost, you multiply by and, which in that case, it will be 18, multiply by 0 0.7, divide by 80, then you multiply by and which in that case will be 15.75%, 15.75%. Now we have the cost of now the long-term loan. And in this case, this is whereby we said, after tax cost of debt, after tax cost of debt will be equal to before tax cost of debt, cost of debt, you minus, you take one minus the taxation, which in this case now will be the KD. And before tax cost of debt in this case was 18%, 18%. Then in this case, you multiply by what? 18%, you multiply by one minus taxation which in that case is 18, multiplied by 0 0.7, which will be 12.6%. That is how you get the cost. Now, what is remaining is now how to get the weights. And now in this case, for the weights in this case, we're going to use them net, what we call in the what? Net of the, no, not net of uh, the flotation cost. Because the amount to raise, yeah, they will have to incur the flotation cost. This will now be the amount to raise, which is the total capital. This will be the amount to raise because that is the amount that they will raise when they issue the shares. You, after you raise the cost that they are going to incur. So with that, we can get the WMCC. Now the WMCC in this case, we begin with the, uh, the weight of ordinary shares, which is 3 million. You divide by 30 million, you multiply by the cost of ordinary shares and the cost of ordinary shares is 23.4. You add the cost of uh, the, the cost of free franchise shares, weight of free franchise shares, weight will be 1.2 million. You divide by 13, 
you multiply by the weight of free, uh, the cost of free prime shares, which is 15. We also have the weight of debenture. Weight of debenture is 4 million. You divide by 13 million. Then you multiply by the cost of debenture, which is 15.75. And then the last one you add 4.8 million divided by 13 million. Then you multiply by 12.6, which in that case will give you how much? <coughs> 23 million all over 13, you multiply by 23.4. 1.2 divide by 13, you multiply by 15. Also, R4, you divide by 13, multiply by 15.75. Then the other one, you add 4.8 all over 13, multiply by 12.6, which in that case, it will be 16.28%. 16.28%. Percent. So that is uh, how you are required to do that question. So you can screenshot on that that question very fast. Screenshot on that question very fast. Screenshot on that question. That we may also try another question. Screenshot on that question. So that we may also try on another question. We also try on another question. Another area, not the weighted capital, cost of capital. But now we're going to do another area. So that is uh, on the cost of capital. Now still on the cost of capital in this case, we also have what we call the special types of uh, topics in financing. And uh, special topics in financing, uh, financing here, will have what we call the leverages. We also have the rise issues, the rise issues, and then we also have what we call the point of what? point of indifference. Now for the rise issues and a point of indifference, this is a question that was there in the previous city. What now was not asked in this case was now on uh, the leverages. And the leverages, the last time that it was asked was November 2018. It was on November 2018. That was question number one. So I will do one question on, uh, I'll begin on the rise issues, then we'll also do on the leverage, one question, and if the time will allow, we'll also do on the point of what? Point of indifference. So let's do on the rise issues, rise issue, and I will do November 2020, November 2020. Question number November 2020. November 2020. That is a question number. November 2020, question two. November 2020, question number two. November 2020, question number two. I'm hoping you have a screenshot on that area. So we I can ramble on this. So now I'm, we're going to start the question on this side. November 2020, question number two.
Now, when you talk about the rise issue, this is a method of raising additional ordinary shares by issuing shares to the existing shareholders at a price that is slightly below the bar value. Generally, this is whereby you, we say you issue shares at a discount. Whether this is not allowed at the securities exchange, but it is always allowable when you are issuing to the existing the what to the existing shareholders. That is what we mean when we talk about the rise issue. So on the rise issue, there are three th things that you need to understand on this case. The first thing is what we call the calm rise issue. That is the calm rise market price per share. When we talk about the calm rise market price per share, this is the price per share after the announcement of the rise issue, but before they take place. The price per share after the announcement of the rise issue and before they take place, which in this case, you normally get it by taking the market price per share before the rise issue. Then you, you add the net present value per share the NBB per share. That is how you will get the calm rights market price per share. Then uh, the second thing that you also need to understand is now what we call the theoretical X rights market price per share. Now, when you talk about the theoretical X rights market price per share, this is the market or the price per share after now the rise issues have taken place. The price per share after the rise issue have taken place, which in this case, you normally get it by taking. PEX will be given by the market value, that is the current market value, current market value of equity. You add you add the new funds to be raised, new funds to be raised through the rise issue. And then you divide by the existing, existing ordinary shares. And then you add the new shares to be issued, new shares to be issued. So the amount to be raised or the new funds to be raised is through the rise issue. New shares is now the shares that are been going to be issued in order to get the what? The funds on the rise issue. That is another thing that you need to understand. You may be also asked on what we call the number of rights in this case. The number of rights in this case will be given by, you take the existing ordinary shares, you divide by uh, the new shares issue, new shares issue. That is how you get the number of rights. What you just want to know is just the, the how the shares, the shareholders are getting the shares. Remember, we said the rights issues are being issued to the existing shareholders. So in this case, you normally understand how many how many shares of the rights issue will each of uh, the shares that have been owned by the existing shares will represent. That is what we call the number of rights. When we talk of number of rights still is shares. Out of the new share, one share will represent how many shares of the existing what? Shareholders, that is one right. When you talk of rights, they are also the shares. Now, <laughs> You may also be asked about the value of a right. Value of a right, there are th three methods that you can use. You can take MPS, you minus the FX, or you take FX, you minus the overprice, but in this case, you divide by number of rights, or you can take the MPS minus overprice, minus overprice, then you divide by the number of rights, you add one. Whichever the case, whichever formula you are going to use, it will give you the same value. Now, the area number three is now the options 
that the investors normally have. Now, investors uh, who want to take uh, the option that they have on the rights issue, they will only have three options. Option number one is what we call the exercise the rights. Now, exercise the rights in this case is whereby they will acquire the rights and then they will keep the shares. They will acquire the shares that have been issued through the rights issue and then they will keep those shares. Then the second option in this case is now to sell all the rights. Sell all the rights. If they, they sell all the rights, in this case, they will acquire all the rights issue and then they will sell them to the stock market. That is on the open market. And in this case, the last one, they also have another option of ignoring the rights issue. Ignoring the rights issue in this case is whereby they will not participate when the rights issues are taking place. So the question that you will be asked in this case is just to determine the value of wealth of an investor who will have to decide because these are the options that they have to undertake during the rights issue. So you will have to determine the value of the wealth of the investor if we either decide to exercise the rights, sell all the rights, or ignore the what? Ignore the rights issue. That is how you will have to do in that regard. So we can do that question of November 2020 so that we may understand what we mean on that regard. November 2020, and that is question number two, 2A. November 2020, question 2A. Now, Jaribu Limited has been operating in the country for many years, and the directors of the company wish to raise additional capital through the rise issue in order to explore opportunities in the region. The directors have decided to make, a, to make one for five rights one to one for five rights issue at a discount of 30 percent at the current market value the company's most uh, recent uh, financial statements are presented below we have the income statement for the year ended that year for the year ended 31st march 2020 we've also been given the capital and reserves as a 31st march march 2020 20 additional information the shares of the company are currently traded at the local securities exchange at a price to uh, to earning or that is a price earning ratio of uh, shilling 16. an investor holding 10,000 ordinary shares in the company has received the information on the forthcoming rights issue, but cannot decide whether to take up the rights issue, sell the rights, uh, sell the rights issue, or allow the rights issue to lapse. The, then you are required the theoretical X rights price of uh, an ordinary share, the price at which the rights issue are likely to be traded, you evaluate each of the three options available to the investor with uh, 10,000 ordinary shares, and you comment on the wealth of the investor based on each of the options evaluated in A, Roman 3 above. Then number, yeah, in Roman 3 above. So what will be given here first, we have what we call the price and in ratio. And we know to get the price earning ratio is always the market price per share you divide by what? Earning per share. So generally what we are trying to look at, we want to know the market price per share. The price at which the shares of that company have been trading at. So do we know the earning per share? No, we don't know the earning per share, but how do we get the earning per share? 
Any per share is given by the profits attributable. Profits attributable to ordinary shares, ordinary shareholders, you divide by the number of ordinary shares. You divide by the number of ordinary shares, which in this case commonly is always the profit after tax. You divide by the number of what? Number of ordinary shares. So in our case, do we know the profit after tax? We were given the, uh, the income statement a net profit after tax in that case, you are given as how much? 21 million. So in that case, it will be 21 million. 21 million. You divide by the number of ordinary shares. The number of ordinary shares will go to the capital and reserves. We've been given the ordinary share capital and we have uh, the bar value, which was 0 0.5. So. The number of ordinary shares here, number of ordinary shares will be the 600 million. That is the, no, 60 million. You divide by 0 0.25. 60 million, you divide by 60 million. You divide by 0 0.5. 60, you divide by 0 0.25, which in that case, it will be 200 and what? 40 million. So what will be the earning per share? Earning per share will be 25, you divide by that, which in this case will be 0 0.0875. That is the earning per share. But in our case, what we want to get is the market price per share. Market price per share will be the price earning ratio, you cross multiply, you multiply by earning per what? Earning per share. So in that case, the price earning ratio in this case was of how much? 16. So you tell 16, you multiply by 0 0.875. 16, you multiply by 0 0.87, 0 0.875. So the market price per share will be given by 1.4. That is now the market price per share. Now, in our case, we want to know the theoretical value. That is now on Roman one, the theoretical, theoretical value. Theoretical value, the theoretical value. Now, to get the theoretical value here, Together, the theoretical value, which that is the theoretical x price, price will be given by current market value, the current market value of equity. You add the new funds to be raised be raised through the rise issue. Then you divide by existing, existing ordinary shares. You add the new shares to be issued. Now for the current market value we know, but we don't know the new funds to be raised. So in that case, for the new funds to be raised is through the rise issue. And in this case, they were given a discount there. When you check on a first paragraph there, the directors decided to have, uh, to make one for five rise issue. First, you have to know the new shares to be issued, new shares. So if uh, one was representing five shares of the existing, that is one for the five, for five. And the shares of existing, do easy to make part up at 200 and what? It was 240. So the rise issue that are going to be issued will be how much? It will be 240, you divide by five. 
So 214, I divide by five. In that case, it will be 48. Will be 48 million ordinary shares. These are the new shares to be issued. But they will issue them at what price? They will be given a discount of 30%. And the market price in this case, we know the market price here is 1.4. So if the market price is 1.4, what will be the overprice? The overprice, they will issue these 48 million ordinary shares at a price of how much? 1.4, you multiply by 70% because they are being given a discount of what? 30%. So I will take 1.4, I multiply by 70% which in that case, it will be 0 0.98. So the new funds will be raised. The new funds will be raised. It will just be 48 million and they will issue them at how much? 0 0.98, which in that case, it will give you how much? 48, you multiply by 0 0.98, which in that case is 47.04 million. That is now the amount that they will raise through the rights issue. So with that, we can now get the facts. With that, we can get the facts. That we can get the facts. So facts in this case will be given by the current market value of equity, which is in the capital reserve, which was 60 million. You add the new funds will be raised, which is 47 point what? 7.04, then you divide by, then ordinary shares existing, they were 240 million. Then you add the new shares to be raised, which was 48 million. So in that case, it will be 60. You add 47.04, you divide by 240 plus 48 which in that case, it will be 0 0.372. That is now the fact, 0 0.372, which in this case, you can also get it by using this. You can also get it by using this. We know one is for the five rise, uh, for the five shares. So if one in this case is representing five, five shares in this case is uh, uh, for existing, which in this case for the existing, they were issued at what? 1.4, which in this case, this one represents one right, which is one uh, right share, the shares that are going to be issued. And for the right issue, they will be issued at how much? 0.98. So if I take five, I multiply by four, by 1.4, in that case will be seven, and this will also be 0 0.98. If I add there, this will be 7.98, and this will be six. So if I take uh, 7.98, 7.98, I divide by six, 7.98, I divide by six, is supposed to give us 1.33. So it's giving us a different value, which in this case is supposed to be the same value. So yes, the new funds will be raised. Okay, this is 240, 240. You divide by five, which is 48. 48, I multiply by 0 0.98, 7.04. And that one is uh, for the other one is, uh, so the new shares was uh, issued at how much? If I take uh, 240, I multiply by 1.4. Yeah, this is where I'm mistaken. Now for the existing, oh, I've used the market price per share. I've not used the 
they 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 they, they have not used in this case i've used what will be given i've not used what was the market price per share which is 1.4 so the shares in this case will be issued at 240 you multiply by 1 point what 1.4 is not supposed to be the existing one so in that case it will just be 240 multiply by 1.4 yeah, this one is supposed to give you 336. You add 47.04, 47.04. Then you divide by 240, you add 48, which in that case is now giving you 1 point what? 1.33. So that is how it's supposed to be. You either use this or you can either use that. These ones are issued at 1 point what? because that is the market price per share. Now, remember we used the VAR value, and in this case for the VAR value, in that case was 0 0.25, and we're not supposed to use that. We're supposed to use the market value. So that is on Roman one, Roman one in that case. Now, Roman number two, it is the price at which the rise issues are likely to be issued. Already we have it, which is the overprice. Overprice will just be, we say it is 70% of the what? Market price, which is 1.4. And in that case was giving us 0.9 watt. That is the market price, which is 0 0.98. Roman number three. Roman number three. You are required to evaluate each of the three options available to the investor with uh, 10,000 ordinary shares. And the options available to the investor, one of it is uh, to, uh, to take up the rights issue, that is to exercise the rights. The second one was to set the rights issue, which in that case we talked about it, and then allow the rights issue to lack, that is ignoring the word the rise issue. So in this case, we'll have to determine the value of wealth of that investor. So first, we have to determine the value of wealth of that investor before the rise issue. That is before the rise issue. Before the rise issue. Now, before the rise issue, the investor, we can first look for the percentage of ownership. Awesome. We can first look for the percentage of ownership. Percentage of ownership. Before we get the values. Now, percentage of ownership of this investor, the investor is having how many shares? Is having 10,000 what? 10,000 shares. So it will be 10,000 shares. 10,000 shares, you divide by, we know the total shares that are there in that company because the rise issues will be issued in accordance with the words, the number of shares, which were 240 words, million. So it, you divide by 240 million, then you multiply by 100. In that case, that investor will be having how, many, how much? To be 10,000, you divide by 240 million, then you multiply by 100, which in that case it will be, in that case it will be zero. It will have in 0 0.0417 percent. That is now the percentage of ownership of that investor, meaning that in this case, the value of wealth of this investor before the rise issue, the value of wealth, the value of wealth, before the rise issue, we know the market price was of how much? 1.4. So in that case, you will just have those 10,000 ordinary shares. You multiply by the market price, which in that case, it will be what? 1.4. So I multiply by 1.4, I multiply by 10,000. So before the rise issue, the investor will be having how much? The investor will have been having 
14,000. Remember the price before the rise issue is at 1.4. So that is now the amount that you will be having. Now, after the rise issue, remember, in these cases whereby you will decide to take up the rights, or number two, you will decide either to sell all his rights, and then number three, you will also decide to, number three, you will also decide to uh, ignore the rise issue. So we can begin, we can now go to the, the after the rise issue. Now, after the rise issue, Manisha, the investor may decide to take up the rights. Take up the rights. Take up the rights. Meaning that in this case, he has done what? Exercise the rights. And in taking up the rights, this is whereby we say he will acquire the rights issue. And then in that case, he's going to sell the rights issue to the world. The, I mean, he's going to keep the rights, not the selling the rights. He will acquire the rights and he will keep the rights. So in that case, before that, we have to understand the number of rights that he's going to acquire. If one right is representing five shares and him is having how many shares? He's having how many shares? He's having 10 what? 10,000 shares you will get how many shares? To be 10,000, you divide by, which will be 2,000 shares. Those are the shares that you will acquire. But now, what if all these, uh, the, the investors in this company, they will also have to take part on the rights issue. So what will be the uh, the rights uh, the rights issues shares for the old investment to be one for five shares, which in this case we know it uh, the total shares for the company they were how much two hundred and forty. This is now for the old investors, the all of uh, the share capital of the world, the investors who have invested on those shares, which in that case is how much it will be 48 million ordinary shares. So if uh, in this case, the investors are going to take part in these rights, remember the rights will, the shares will now increase by how much? No, the shares will increase by 48 million. They will increase from 240, you add 48 words. So in that case, we can now take the percentage of ownership percentage of ownership. Now, percentage of ownership will be, yeah, yeah, Takuana shares Gapi. It will have 1,000, you add how many shares? That is in our Zeka Nagapi, 2,000. But now, in this case, the, 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 the shares of the company, they require 240, and all, if all the other investors will also participate in Kumanisha Bados, it increase. And they will increase by how much? 48 million. So you multiply by and. So it akuangapi. What will be the percentage of ownership if he exercises the rights? So the percentage of ownership will be, will be, you divide by 240, you express into 6, 48, you express into 6, then you multiply by 100. In that case, it will be 0 0.5. Percent. So when you check on this case, the percentage of ownership is not going to change. But now what will be the value of wealth of this investor? Value of wealth. We are for the, the ordinary shares. The ordinary shares that are Kwanagapi, it will have 12,000, this plus this, you multiply by how much? 
What was the price after the rise issue? That is the PEX. Remember we said the price after the rise issue is the theoretical X rise issue, which in this case is what? 1.33. So what will be the, the, the value? It will be 12,000 multiplied by 1.33, which in that case, for the ordinary shares, to be 12,000, you multiply by 1.33, which is 15,960. That is now the value. But however, you will incur a cost of acquiring the what? Rights. So what is the cost of the rights? Siata, it, it will have to pay. Lazima Lipia is the 2,000 shares that he has already done what? Because one appear at what price? The overprice is this. So you'll just take 2,000. You multiply by 0 0.998. That is the, the price at which the rise issue, they are acquiring them. So Lazima Lipia he pesa, he had acquired those rights. So it is 2,000 multiply by 0 0.9 eight which in that case it will be 1960 so if i minus that 15000 15960 minus answer it will just be what so the value of wealth value of wealth will be what value of wealth will be 14000 and as you can check it is still not changing if we exercise the rights in this case, they will remain the same. Then the other one, you can now do what? Sell the rights. Now, if we sell the rights in this case, is whereby you will acquire the rights issue and then sell them to the what? The security exchange. So in this case, first, we can also look for the percentage of ownership. The percentage of ownership. So percentage of ownership still again in this case will be of how much? Remember, he's acquiring the rights issue and then selling them. So easy atakuwa nazo, atakuwa mezuza. Sawa sawa. Meaning that he will only have how many shares? 10,000 shares. But the shares of that company. They may increase because of the rise issue to how much? 48, because all these other investors, they may also take part to the what? The rise issue. So in that case, you'll also divide by 240 million, you add 48 million. And then you multiply by 100. So in that case, it akua ngapi? 10,000, you divide by 240, that is uh, 200, you divide by 10,000, you divide by 240,000, you also add 48,000, which in that case you multiply by 100. So the percentage of ownership will be 0 0.035, 347. Percent. That is now the percentage of ownership. Now we can get the value of wealth. Value of wealth. So the value of wealth in this case, the value of wealth in this case will be of how much? Value of wealth if we decide to sell all the rights. The value of wealth if we decide to sell all the rights, it will be is having. Ordinary shares in Yakonazo, Ningapi. Akona 10,000. But now they are being sold at what value? They are being sold, the price after the rise issue we said is the X right market price per share, which is 1.33, which in that case it will give you 13,300. Then it will sell the rights. Sell the rights. You will sell the rights at also what value? They are being issued at 
So still it will sell them at 1.33. So 2000, you multiply by 1.33, which in that case will be 2660. And then the last one is now you have to list the cost of what? The cost of the rights. Lazima Zilipier. And the cost of the rights will not change, will still be what? 1960. So what will be the value of that investor? Be 13,300, you add, you add 2660 minus 1960, which in that case is 14, 14,000. That is if he decides to exercise. That is if he decides to sell the rights. Now, the last one, I will do it here. I will do the last one in this case. If he decides to ignore the what? Ignore the rights. Ignore the rights in this case is not going to participate when the rights issues are taking place. He's not going to participate when the rights issue are taking place. Meaning that still, the percentage of ownership, percentage of ownership, ownership will be of how much? Atakuwa tuna hizo shares. But remember, the shares of the organization from 240 million by 48. Then you multiply by 100. Your height has changed. Atakuwa na 0.0, .0 seven. Then after that, we have also have to know the value of wealth. The value of wealth, you will have only those shares, which in that case, it will just be 10,000. But in this case, the price of the rise issue, it may change. It will change to how much? 1.33. In that case, you will only have what we call the what? you will just get 13, 300. That is what will be the value of the wealth. Cause the price, the X price in this case is that. So he's not going to participate. He has just ignored the what? Ignored the rights issue. Now Kiangalia, the price it at Remka to 13. So that is uh, on Roman number two, Roman number two, that is whereby if he decides if he decides to ignore the rise issue. The value that he will be having is going to have how much? That value. Now, the, that, the last uh, question, the last question, that is Roman number four. Roman number four, you are required to comment to the investor based on the following options are evaluated in A above. So in this case, if you now check on this case, the investor will not have to ignore the rights. The reason is, if he ignores the rights, the value of the wealth it, it at Remuka by 700 shillings. So in that case, he cannot take this option. Now, when you check on this other one, if he takes the rights issue, the percentage of ownership is still 14, I mean, the value of wealth is still the same. 14,000. Still in this case, it will be also what? 14,000. Which in that case, the value of wealth is just the same. But out of the exercising the rights and sale of the rights, which will be the best option for the investor? In that case, now that is whereby you base on the percentage of ownership. And when you take on the percentage of ownership, or when he exercises the rights, it occurs 0 0.0417. But if he decides to sell the rights, the percentage of uh, ownership, it occurs in 0 0.0347. So out of the two, which will be the better, the best option? The shareholder in this case should exercise the rights. And reason is because the percentage of ownership is greater than in the, when he decides to sell the what? when he decides to sell the rights. And that is how you are required to do the question.
So any question or regards to the same? <laughs> Any question on regards to the same? I'm on my plot yote. Yes. It's uh, very easy. And I I I'm even wondering why you you okay. In this case, however, is a question that cannot be repeated. But in this case, also, this is a question that they repeated. This is a question in June 2008, and I know I've ever given you as an assignment, June 2008. That is just the same, same question that they were talking about, but I don't think whether, uh, I think the values were different on June 2008, and it was question number what? Two. When you check on June 2008, question two, we just talking about the same, same things. Yes, June 2008, question two. However, the values were different, but uh, the, in determining the value of wealth of investor, just something that is still related. We were given the market price per share in that regard and also the rise issue. So that is how you are required to do on that case. So we can also get to another area I can also do a question on, uh, no, the time is not going to allow. The time is not going to allow. So in our next class, which is uh, tomorrow, I do a question on beverage. I do a question on beverage. And I will also do another question on point of indifference. And after we do point of indifference, I will also cover on uh, the valuation of securities. After valuation of securities, we'll also talk about the capital budgeting. But now in this case, in this case, I told you the question that you are ex expecting and make sure that you base on those questions that I told you. One of it, I talked about the cost of capital, which is a, an area that you'll never miss, cost of capital. Now, in this case, we have these areas that you are talking about. We have the rise issue, we have the point of indifference, and we have what we call the reverages. Now, for the point of indifference and the reverages, in this case, you, there is high probability of it not being there. Because in this case, if uh, they bring a question, they have to alternate either rise issue, point of indifference, or the river rates. The previous uh, two consecutive sitting for November 2020 and November 2019, it was on rise issue. 2020 is now what they have introduced on what we call the point of indifference. And I told you the last time that riverage was tested was November 20 what? 18. So there is high probability of it being on leverage. Then the other areas that I also need you to measure on is on the ratio. If you check on all the May seating, that one is not a contradiction. That is a question that is always in all the May seating. And there is high probability, almost 99% of this one being there on ratio analysis. Then the other one that never misses is also on working capital management. Working capital management was less later on cash management. And basically, it was what we call the what? Miller and all. In cash management model, remember, we talked about two models. There is the cash, uh, the Miller and all, and there is the BOMOS model. So if they are not going to bring a question on BOMOS model, expect the data's management. You expect on the data's management, that is on the changes of the policy. That is also another thing that you have to be aware of. Then uh, the other thing is on now valuation of securities. Valuation of securities is only one sitting that it missed, and it was only for previous sitting. 
When you check on all those sitting, even from September 2015, there is no single time that that question on valuation of securities has ever missed. And in this case, remember, they based on only two, either if we're on valuation of bond or what we call the what? Ordinary shares. And when I talk of ordinary shares, basically is on the Godons, Godons model, the dividend yield. Either on the non-constant or the constant what? Dividend uh, uh, ordinary shares. Then the other thing, the other thing that also you need to be on is uh, forecasting, forecasting. And then after forecasting, there is also forecasting, we have the cash budget and we also have the what? Percentage of sales method. The last time the cash budget was tested was on May 2017. That is when they tested on the cash states. Percentage of sales, it was tested on November 2016. So the high chances is either they bring the percentage of sales, if they bring on forecasting, or else they can also repeat on the cash word budget. And then the other one, the other area is now on capital budgeting. Now capital budgeting, I said we normally categorize it into three. There is a, the, this, the project evaluation technique, and we also have the risk analysis and also what we call the what? What we call the, uh, the replacement analysis. Replacement analysis was there in previous sitting. Risk analysis was there in the sitting of November 2019. The only question that has not been repeated, uh, been done for previous consecutive sitting is on what we call the discounting technique, the project evaluation techniques. The only time that that question was tested was on May 2019, which they asked on the modified internal rate of return. Since then, on May 2019, there has no been question on the what? Project evaluation techniques. So that will tell you, out of all those techniques, there is high probability equal. It will also occur on the techniques still again, for risk analysis, which is the area that uh, terrorized people of November 2019, was related to questions on risk analysis, which were covering 14, uh, not 14, they were covering around 20 marks of uh, November 2019. Yeah, it was covering, was nine, you add uh, the other one, which was uh, eight, which was around 15 marks. So that is also another thing that you need to place concern on. So in this case, remember, we will not be able to tackle each and every area. And therefore, if, in that case, I will request you for those who are having the notes, you can review the notes. We also have in our case e College app, which can also assist you on some of these areas that I've talked about, which in this case, you can get it on the Google Play Store. Just search the KC College what? Just search KC College app. And you will be able to see that you download it, you just, you download and you install it. And in that case, you'll be able to view all those videos at only 2,000 per, per unit. So we just, uh, we are discounting them and we are issuing those videos at 2,000 shillings. So you, if you may be in need of those videos, you can conduct us or you can also conduct me via this number and I will be able to assist you on the same. Just contact me via that number, which is 0714-166-318, and I will be able to assist you on the same. So we'll continue from there in our next class, that is tomorrow.